Okay, now you know what tubeless is. It's actually time to put it all together. First step, I'm gonna clean up this rim. Fortunately, in our orange seal kit, they actually give us a nice alcohol pad. What you're gonna do is just rub that on the inner rim to get this rim bed nice and clean so our tape sticks really well to it. Time to install some tape. I'm just gonna come up here and hang out with you guys like this. All right, you've got your, your valve hole here. That's where the valve's gonna go. I like to go three holes behind. Now we got a good reference point. Now, push this initial section down good and tight on that rim. So it's got a really good seal and stick. Hold with your thumb and pull this tape tight. Pull it really tight. And then run your finger right down the bed of the rim. The tighter you can pull this tape on the rim, the better this seal is gonna be. Because you wanna create an airtight seal right around the lip of each one of these spoke holes because you don't want the air to go in that spoke hole. You want it all to stay within the tire and the rim. So you want a nice, good seal in there. That's one of the great things about this orange seal tape is it pulls really tight and it actually has some elasticity in it. You don't want the tape to be so thin that it doesn't reach the edge of these holes with a little bit of overlap but you also don't want it to be so wide that your tape is all the way up the side of the rim, not allowing your tire to make a really good bond with the rim itself. We started three spoke holes to the rear of the valve. Now, we're gonna go one, two, three spoke holes to the front of the valve. Now we have the rim entirely taped. Go another round and just push that tape deep into the rim bed. Create that airtight seal that you really want. Now's the fun part. Remember, I told you, you need a pick. Well, this is why. Don't poke the wrong hole. I've done that before, and then you kind of got to start the whole process over. Find your valve hole right here, and then lightly take your hand from the other side and just poke a tiny hole in there, just like that, nice and small. I actually saw this on Instagram. Take your file and actually file that hole open. This file is going to actually allow you to cut the tape instead of just pushing it out of the way. So it doesn't create any folds or rolls in the tape. It's also going to deburr the rim itself in case you have a small sharp burr or a small shard of carbon fiber that might damage this. It's going to get rid of that at the same time. It's kind of a double whammy situation. And just like that, we have a beautifully trimmed hole. Just in case you don't have a round file like this at home, or that doesn't tickle your fancy, you've got a slightly more fun way to do it. It's not the way that I would do, but I have seen this before. And it involves fire and a really expensive Wera screwdriver. You get this nice and warm, don't burn yourself. And then we go straight over. Don't burn yourself. When you come in here, you gotta really, really find your valve hole, but then, tss, oh. Nice and clean. It's not quite as beautiful as the file, but it works pretty well. I'll let you take a look and decide. Two different methods, two different flavors. You decide what's best for you. In all seriousness though, I do highly recommend the round file. This is, this is kind of just for fun and for show. It works, but the round file's a better option. One of my favorite things about the supplied orange seal valve stem is that it has a really nice square rubber seal on it, which gives a lot of surface area to create a nice bond between rim and valve. That's one of the most common places for leaks. So having that big edge is really gonna help out. So insert your valve through like so, push down hard with your thumb, install your O-ring, that's crucial. It's gonna help you a lot later. And then your jam nut right on the bottom. And then take your thumb, push and tighten. Push and tighten, push and tighten. Three times, usually pretty good from there. 
Next step is an easy one. We're gonna take our tire here. I would say line up your logos, but I've got a blank logoless tire here. If you do have logos, please line them up with your valve stem. First side of the tire on. Quick, simple. This is the opportunity where if you have slightly weaker hands, this is gonna come into play. This is about the only time in the process that I would recommend using this for the install. So there are two different options for installing your sealant. You have option number one, while the tire is open, you pour it in like this. I have found that sometimes that can get a bit messy. And what I mean by that is, I have been known to be a Butterfingers, drop the rim, with the tire open and sealant goes everywhere. That's not what I wanna do. I am going to actually fully install this tire, both sides. Run your hand right up the rim like that. Flip her around. In case I did that too quick for you, here's a quick slow-mo of that last bit. Slowly roll the rim on the tire. Just like that, and then you are ready to install your sealant. Valve core removal tool. This is one tool I did not put on there, but I'll put it at the end. Crucial. Take this valve core out. Get it nice and loose. Set it aside. You will need it later. Now you're wondering, what's this? What is this? Why do you have that? Well, orange seal is nice enough to include it in the kit. Push it over the valve stem, like so. Now you have a nice sealed system to install your tubeless sealant where you make no mess at all. This is also a great time to introduce the fact that different tire sizes do have different amounts. Um, for, for that, I would recommend going to actually orangeseal.com. It has all the specifics of both temperature range and amounts for each tire. This one here is 29 inch tires, we're looking at three to four ounces or four, your metrics, 88 milliliters, 118 milliliters. All right, this bottle is an eight ounce bottle, if I'm correct. Yes, I'm correct. So we're gonna do about half a bottle per tire. So we're gonna squeeze it in there and squeeze again. I would say that is approximately half the bottle. Oh, I got a bubble. Now for my true professionals, this is a great time to take your compressor and just blow all that sealant back into the tire so it doesn't get on your nice valve core here. We're going to next install our valve core. Snug it down with our valve core tool, just like that. Little wipe up here, boom, there we are. Now comes the fun part. You actually get to install the tire on the tire bead. Yep, it works. Okay, open up valve core. It's nice and rattly and movie. And then all you gotta do is oh, maybe come on. There we are. Almost there. Oh, popping's good. Hey, just like that, it worked first time. I'm stoked. Just kidding, it always works first time if you're a professional. Well, well that's it everybody, you can go home now. We're done with this. Uh, that's it for the six part series. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll see you next time. No, so in all reality, there are a couple different tricks. Sometimes it doesn't always go up the first time. And if that happens, like let's say the tire is being difficult, you're not able to force enough air into the tire to expand that tire. Uh, I should have showed you this when I had it as just a rim. In fact, we'll, we'll cut back to that right now. This is your rim. There's a funky shape to it. You've got the rim bed here in the center. That's going to be the deep part that your tire jumps into to put the tire on and off. And then for installing a tire and creating that tight seal, it's going to jump up onto these outer ridges that you see here. Those are called the rim bead. That's where the tire is going to create an airtight seal on top of. Further out, you have the edge of the rim. This is going to be a hookless style rim. Notice that it's just a flat wall. Some rims actually have a hook, which is a J section that hooks the tire onto it. 
Now, this is an important step because you need to know if your tire is hookless compatible. Some tires are, some tires are not. Generally, it's printed on the sidewall of your rim if your tires are compatible with a hookless style rim, such as the one I have here in front of me. Okay, now we're back in real time. Let's say you're having a difficult time popping that tire actually up onto the bead of the rim. You remove that valve core, and that's going to allow you to actually force more air in all at once. If that doesn't work, there's even a step further. This here is slightly restrictive. One of my favorite tools in the shop is gonna be just a good old fashioned air gun like this. There's zero restriction in this. This is gonna have the highest flow rate of, of pretty much any, any tool you can put on a compressor. And then you just hook it right up to the end. I like this needle point because it fits really nice and conveniently into my valve core. And then hold on to the tire because it's gonna go quick. Whoa, there it is. And just like that, you've got a tire onto a rim. Top off the tire. I like to set the pressure right at the max of what the tire and rim combination are able to handle. What that's going to do is actually expand that sealant and force it into any imperfections in this tire rim combination and create a really, really tight seal. Now I've done that, close up your valve stem and then simply bounce it gently around. Give it a little shake, 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 shake. Shake your booty, shake your booty. What that does is that actually moves the sealant all around the tire. And if you've got any tiny imperfections, you might even see some sealant coming out right around the bead. That means there was a slight imperfection and this sealant has now sealed that hole. Okay, that's a well-sealed tire. Look at that, we're good to go. We're gonna put our valve cap back on because valve caps are pro and they look super clean. Now the valve cap's on. Last thing you need to do is go in the shower. Uh, don't tell your partner, your wife, your husband, or the other. And clean off all this excess sealant that happened to be around. Or if you're in a shop, you hand it to your lucky customer and uh, your job's done. That's it, that's all.